Good morning, everyone. My name is Jeff Middleton, National Sales Manager for eImage Data. We are the uh, manufacturer of the uh, ScanPro 3000. We appreciate your time this morning, and I hope to enlighten you with the uh, uh, information associated with our ScanPro 3000 and its unique capabilities of uh, scanning microfilm. All microfilm formats are accepted through the product. Um, and to begin, I, I just wanted to quickly let you know a little about who we are. And uh, we've been in business since 1989, celebrating over 25 years of success. Uh, we're an industry leader in the design, manufacturing, marketing, and sales and distribution of state-of-the-art micrographic scanning equipment since 1989. Our products are produced under the ScanPro brand and ship worldwide uh, to customers that use microfilm. Um, this is inclusive of uh, three models currently. Everything's manufactured and distributed out of Hartford, Wisconsin. So it's assembled in uh, uh, Wisconsin and distributed through Wisconsin uh, to every uh, worldwide uh, distribution channel. Uh, we have a sales office uh, in Philadelphia as well as London for the international sales and distribution. And uh, our patent technology supports a, a vast array of features and functions, uh, inclusive of several that are very, very unique to our product. Uh, one is focus. Uh, we focus on every image that you uh, are reviewing through our scanner. And that could be microfiche, micropakes, ultrafiche, uh, 16, 35 millimeter reels, cartridges, so on down the line. In addition, we offer as an add-on uh, OCR uh, capabilities powered by Abifine Reader, and we actually output to PDFA, which is the NARA standard for archival type electronic storage uh, formats. And um, lastly, uh, we also have incorporated 26 mega megapixel resolution for ultra high definition scanning of microfilm images. And I will go through this obviously in the uh, demonstration. And uh, lastly, it is the most compact, feature rich, competitively priced and have a track record of performance and reliability um, hands down uh, compared to anybody in the market. Very easy to use. And with this said, uh, what I'd like to do is jump right in to a demonstration of the product. Um, the product itself um, is a standalone 11 by 17 size uh, scanner. It fits on your desktop. As I mentioned, it accepts all microfilm formats. You can see in this little little photo or picture here, you know, the 1635 opaques. Uh, ultrafiche, aperture cards, cartridge, we'll accept any and all types of formats. Uh, what you see here is called our Film Selection Wizard. Uh, the Film Selection Wizard allows you to customize the system uh, to incorporate um, uh, patron use and also staff use um, and uh, basically customize it to enter into the settings that are appropriate to your type of use with the scanner. So everything I'm about to show you is fully customizable. And the way I've broken it out, we can use OCR today. If you have an aperture card, we can scan aperture cards. A basic user, somebody that comes in and uh, uses uh, some of the functionality of the uh, scanner, but not all. Expert user might use all the functionality inclusive of what I'm about to show you. We can also read micro-opaque cards. Uh, uh, we utilize a uh, bank of lamps that, uh, by the way, for the life of the equipment, the lamps are um, free of charge to replace. We use LEDs, and uh, they last for thousands of hours and uh, uh, such. In addition, we'll handle fiche, ultra fiche, positive, negative. It doesn't matter to us. To begin, um, I'm going to access our basic user settings. Now, a lot of times when uh, you utilize micrographic equipment, a uh, user will come in and the prior settings 
of a microfilm uh, scanner and or reader printer would a lot that uh, you get a, a visual of a, an image such as what you see on the screen. Um, basically, it's de-skewed, it's light, um, it needs adjustment, you want to crop this information. Basically, we have a single um, button called Auto Adjustment. So when you click this, we're actually going to read the film, give you the best density, contrast, brightness setting, crop the document, de-skew it all in one. So basically, it's preparing this image for viewing, printing, scanning, emailing, OCR, and whatever you want to do with this information. Uh, we also have manual controls uh, over and above the automated controls that will allow us to lighten, darken, adjust the contrast, and such um, of this image. If you'd like to um, go to, you're reading through this information, you would like to go to the next image, you would simply click on an arrow and it would bring in the next image. So you could do it that way or you can utilize what's called the motorized roll film control. Now this will allow you to um, adjust, uh, excuse me, scroll through the information uh, slowly or quickly and get to uh, where you need to go at this point. Please notice um, we, we offer a focus lock trademark uh, solution as patent and the reason I bring that up is when you zoom in and out of this information um, you can do this via optically and every time you make this adjustment we are constantly in focus. We are the only unit on the market to continuously focus at all um, optical resolutions. Doesn't matter what type of film or optical resolution that you uh, have on hand or are looking uh, uh, at the image through um, and basically we're, we're continuously in focus. So it's very important when you're evaluating uh, systems and, and uh, wanting to uh, have a very simple ease of use uh, product in your library or, or any of your uh, facilities if you're a government and such. Any patron uh, or public environment, this is very, very important. You can zoom your information optically and in addition you can zoom your information digitally. So if you want to, if you would like to increase the information size on the screen without having to optically zoom, we can leverage a magnifier. And you can increase the size of the information uh, relative to working with it. So uh, it's very simple to operate and very easy to maneuver. In addition, while I'm here, I had mentioned um, I believe we have a 26 megapixel resolution uh, capability with our ScanPro 3000. And what that means to you is we can scan, print, email, um, and such uh, it, in a 26 megapixel uh, DPI environment. So it's the highest rated output uh, that any microfilm scanner in the industry can um, produce. And Generally, what I like to show folks is even within the viewer, you can look at small detailed information on the screen and make the adjustment. As you see, we, we are a little grainy here. If I make one click, and it will make an adjustment on the camera, and this is what happens to your information when you make this adjustment. So we're, we're going to do our due diligence and make the adjustment appropriately on your output. So every time you print or scan something, we will literally make this change to your information and clarify it and give you the highest rated output in the industry. So it's very important um, that uh, you, you generate some of this information. In addition, uh, when you have detailed uh, older uh, microfilm and, and images, uh, you may not be able to get the clarity uh, through a standard uh, uh, analog type scanner where you need uh, ultra high definition to enhance it and give you the best high, highest quality output uh, possible. In addition we have a uh, simple functionality uh, 
associated with the information in the scanner. And you can rotate uh, manually left to right and make it these manual adjustments. Uh, we can automatically crop the document. Uh, we can utilize uh, micro opaques as well as uh, positive and negative uh, type uh, microfilm. And all you need to do is click a button. It's really simple and it'll change the polarity. We also have what's called a film orientation. And what that, in a nutshell, uh, provides you is rotating of an image sensor or the camera head. And what that uh, provides, uh, in addition to uh, high quality, we can also rotate this to adjust to landscape or portrait type documents. Not every uh, microfilm image is filmed the same on every reel of film or microfiche. So if you have any landscape documents versus portrait documents, we uh, physically change the, the uh, camera head to rotate 90 degrees to give you 100% resolution at all times. You can also digitally rotate the image 90 degrees as well. For the fish applications, uh, we also flip documents right on the screen. So you can see it's now inverted, and instead of pulling the fish out of the machine and, and turning it over physically, we can just do this directly on the screen and quickly uh, uh, flip the uh, information so you can start working with it. With this ba basic uh, user setup, um, I've included a printer and also a scan capability within um, a simple interface. And all your features basically are located on one custom menu. These menus can be customized to associate to how you operate this system day in, day out. And that, again, refers back to the film orientation, or excuse me, the film selection wizard. And you customize, again, by way of 35 millimeter fiche, uh, any of the cartridge, OPEX, whatever you might have. So I've, again, basically set this up. If you'd like to quickly scan, you just click this button. You create a PDF, TIFF, JPEG, any really uh, standard file format that you'd like to uh, utilize the system uh, with. And to show you the output, this is the image I just generated, and you can see the high resolution. And this is actually standard definition scanning. So our standard definition um, meets the criteria of probably your expectation, uh, oh, probably 70, 80 percent of the time. The high definite, ultra high definition scanning comes in with poor, again poor quality film or detailed information if needed. Going back to the film selection wizard, um, again, we can simplify, simplify our system to adjust all the um, settings in a very simple manner. So what this means to you, again, is dealing with the public at times. You want to really break down the system. And as you can see, I customize these menus, and I've relabeled them appropriately as home, adjust image, print and scan, and then the setup. So the home, again, will give you basics to move forward and reverse with an image. Again, the auto adjust, we, we find this, this is a very popular feature. The magnifier, again, for viewing, brightness, and maybe manually straighten the image. If you go into the second menu, we have something what's called um, spot editing. And what that gives you the ability to do is now clean up a document. And by the way, it's a live image. So we haven't done anything to this document other than attempt to clean up an area of the document. So I'll lighten this area up and maybe add a little contrast or take it out. And what's nice is not only uh, do you have the ability to do that in one area, you have multiple areas in a document. So film is uh, really good at times, really bad, and, and everything in between. 
we give you a tool that uh, basically enhances the way you can uh, clean up a document and provide this in uh, multiple areas within a document. And at that's, this point, maybe you'd like to print or scan the information, and you can quickly do so. So you can turn this feature on or off. Again, zooming your film type, your film types, you get positive, negative, micro opaques, rotation, mirror. These are all simple breakdowns of our uh, basic features. And then in addition, you can print, scan, email. If you'd like to email, you just click on the email and um, add in an email. maybe a subject and message and say send. Now what I'm doing is generating an email uh, obviously to myself and uh, within uh, seconds it is generated and sent out using an outgoing SMTP server or client. Many folks uh, can configure this uh, as Gmail and such. Another nice feature we just recently added to our software is called Scan to Merge Clips. And what this gives you the ability to do is uh, take sections of an article or, or image um, and combine multiple areas either from one image or different images associated with uh, what you're researching and maybe the last thing you would like to capture is um, the title information, date, and such. So I scan to my Merge Clips application, and then once I've completed my research, I click on Merge and Annotate. Now this will allow me to combine multiple articles or, or sections of articles onto one piece of paper or one scan. In addition, it allows me to add notes. And you can also highlight text. There's a variety of tools within our Merge Clip application that you can leverage. You can stamp information, uh, utilize um, many of the graphic uh, features uh, necessary in the graphic environment. And you can also associate the notes to this information. Now once you've con concluded, uh, you can save it or print it. Again, this is called Merge, Scan to Merge Clips, and this is incorporated with any and all of our products. We also have um, included, uh, excuse me, incorporated within our product um, OCR. And um, there's a very good product on the market that we've um, actually uh, uh, partnered with, and the product's called Abbey Fine Reader. And Abbey basically gives us the ability to integrate uh, research tools that are very beneficial. Uh, especially if you're researching uh, the information uh, within maybe your library or if you're a genealogist or a researcher by way of um, word searching, info link, copying the clipboard, and in addition we can create multi-page searchable PDFs with what's called the productivity suite for researchers. So. I bring up the image and um, instead of having to zoom out, read the uh, page, looking for whatever I'm looking for, um, you would just basically type in exactly what you're looking for. And I'm going to use a basic word that we all know and love is called the. <laughs> uh, the is uh, being researched on this document document within sub-second 
and it highlights all the areas where the would be located on this document. If by chance you, whatever you're looking for is not there, you can go to the next image and it's automatically cropped and just say find again. We will process this image again within seconds and show you the information on the screen um, associated with what you're looking for. And we can continue to do this image by image one at a time, but very quickly, uh, very efficiently. Once you find what you're looking for, you may want to open up your magnifier and start reading through the information associated with uh, your research. And uh, once you uh, come across something that you would like additional information on, we've incorporated what's called an info link. An info link is uh, uh, the capability of taking content directly from the scan, or excuse me, your live image, and now researching it via uh, any database or URL that you have access to within your organization. So a good example would be a law library that's uh, looking up information and they're working on a case and there's some additional information directly off the image that you would like to research uh, through, say, LexisNexis or some other database uh, type environment. Well, here our default is Google, Wikipedia, and Dictionary.com, but now I've highlighted Democratic National Convention, and I click on Google, and here it comes. It's, it's linked directly to our um, information or content from the screen. So we find this as a, a valuable tool for, again, additional research and uh, quickly um, getting to information to, uh, that's referring to what you're looking for. In addition, we can scan to uh, DVD or CD if needed. We scan to USB drives, hard drives, and such. Um, one of the latest uh, features we've incorporated is called uh, Scan to Cloud. Currently, we have uh, Family Search, and Family Search is the uh, Church of the Latter-day Saints uh, folks. And uh, if you have a free account with the FamilySearch.org website, basically you log in. And notice when I uh, say connect here, the scanning button changes to the family search tree. So that basically tells me it's active, and what I'm going to do is just take this image, and I'm going to scan it directly up to the cloud services for family search. And it, we logged into my account directly, and this typically takes about 30 seconds or so to populate into the account for the family search folks. So if we go out to the account, and I'm already logged in, and I go into my documents section under memories, you can see now here's the document that I scanned, and a variety of others that I've scanned in the, in the past uh, several weeks. Now this gives the account owner of uh, through family search the ability to uh, upload this information tag this information and work with this information for their own family tree and it's directly scanned into this environment we find this very beneficial for many of our library customers okay um, Lastly, I will uh, quickly note that we are password protected to enter into what our setup screen is. And the setup screen is really the brains behind the system. And this is where you would customize your complete system. So you would, uh, uh, just like Windows, uh, you could set up your menus. 
You can relabel your menu here and add or drop any and all of your controls. With this tab, um, you basically set up the pass for scanning purpose, and you have three areas to scan to. You have an email and cloud. Printers, you can print to three separate printers, whether they're small, smaller uh, lasers or larger format lasers um, or impact or whatever you might be. Uh, utilizing for prints. You can also print to your multifunction devices if on a network as well. A couple optional items real quick. We can put a watermark directly on the document as well. So if you enable this scanning capability, we offer a watermark uh, directly onto the document. So uh, when someone scans or emails or prints something uh, through our system, it will say where it, it printed or scanned from. And lastly, we have the option of a copyright um, notification. So every time you print or scan something, this copyright warning will appear. And if acknowledged or accepted, uh, it will allow the user to proceed. If not, um, it will not allow the user to proceed as well. And I'll just decline that. Okay, so um, this pretty much concludes our um, presentation on the ScanPro 3000. I hope it was very beneficial. Uh, I will leave you with a um, final note that um, we do have several thousand units in the industry. And just to identify some current customers, uh, we're, we currently have these folks using our, our products out there. And you can see many of them are um, archive related or library related. Um, in addition, government. Uh, uh, we also have uh, commercial entities using our products in the uh, insurance industry, the banking industry, and other industries. And uh, here's some more. And um, I thank you very much for your time. And we appreciate you listening. Uh, if uh, you would like to uh, set a free, no obligation on-site demonstration of our ScanPro 3000. Wayne Haluska at IMR would gladly uh, accommodate your, uh, your needs and bring out a unit and, and check out your film through our uh, ScanPro 3000. Hey, Jeff, um, we got yes. a couple questions here. Sure. What are the differences between the 3000 and the U-Scan, if any? Our software desktop is not the same as your presentation. OK. Um, the, the differences between the U-Scan and the ScanPro 3000? Mm -hmm. OK. The ScanPro 3000 offers a 26 megapixel uh, camera resolution. Uh, the U-Scan uh, provides a 10 uh, megapixel camera. Um, we, we basically, our, our OCR development is much more advanced than the U-Scan product. Uh, to my knowledge, they create searchable PDF, which is very common in the industry. Uh, where we separate ourselves uh, there is uh, utilizing our word search capability and uh, uh, the copy to clipboard and the info link. Um, we also are extremely fast in processing information or images. Um, give you an example. Um, all, all the other products on the market um, utilize uh, what's called a uh, thumbnail view or something of that nature. Uh, we don't um, subscribe to that, and, and mainly because we're dealing with live images, and we process these live images so fast that we don't need to one, view them because we know it's the highest resolution in the industry. And two, uh, we combine them so quickly 
and efficiently that we really don't need to double check our work. Um, we're very confident in what we provide. A multi-page searchable PDF um, utilized and created through our product take upwards to 20 to 30 seconds. All the competition in the marketplace basically takes minutes. So we have one to two steps compared to three to four to five with the competitive products out there. Okay, great. Um, I got about five more for you. Okay. Um, I noticed the scan to drive and the scan to email function default to PDF. We have ScanPro 2000s that default to PNG. And we're told that that could not be changed in the software. Is this true? We'd like to have we'd like to have the machines default to a more common file type. Okay, so if I understand correctly, you're defaulting to PNG. Correct. Okay, so when you go into our software, you can predetermine or preset the scanning format. So if you go in the scan and say your, your scan icon here, okay, right here and or here, or it could be any of these, uh, scan to drive one, two, or three, you basically choose or predetermine your default here. So once you do this, say you choose PDF and you want to save your settings if you've created uh, predetermined settings and you just click here and I'll just call it um, PDF and now I save that. You say OK. Now every time you boot up your software, the format will automatically default to PDF. Uh, um, maybe ask if that resolves their question. Okay. Um, what do we have next here? Could you show again how you scanned to merge clip only sections of the film? Sure. Okay, to scan the merge clip Basically, we use our crop box, okay, and you're going to surround the section of the document that you would like to scan or article, and then you click Scan to Merge Clips. Oh, my copyright's still on, so we won't allow you until you say yes, accept. So now you're building, building the sections that you want to uh, merge. And maybe the rest of the article is on, on a different page. Obviously, we would get advertisements now. <laughs> Here we go. And uh, maybe you would like this in addition to this initial scanned article. And you would uh, position the crop box around that section, say scan the merge clip, We'll accept our copyright. And maybe you would like the uh, date and time and all that good stuff or, or where it came from and scan to merge clips. So once we've gathered all the information that you would like to merge, you click Merge Annotate. Merge Annotate, and this will launch the application, and maybe you take the heading and put that up top, and then you take your articles by clicking on these, and then click left mouse click and drag, and that will set the articles in place. And then you can do your annotation here. And once you've completed this, and I'll, I'll just, uh, I can complete this, and I'll, I'll just put the highlight on. We will save this document, and you can choose your format here. I believe it 
uh, excuse me, defaults to BMP. And now you've created your, your document and saved it. You can email it, you can print it, whatever you'd like at this point. Okay. Okay. The next question we have here is, can you trade in a non-ScanPro unit for the purchase of a ScanPro? Well, I'd like to know what we're trading in. Um, typically, if it's an older model unit, uh, what I would suggest is you work with your local uh, reseller, uh, IMR, to see if the, the unit has value. Um, if you're a current uh, customer under contract, um, there's ways and means that IMR can get creative to either take in a trade-in or and or um, adjust possible uh, prorated service contracts, stuff like that. Um, from my vantage point as the manufacturer, we typically only deal in scam pro items um, unless it's a really unique uh, circumstance and, and we'll see what we can do. Okay, great. Um, still got a couple more here. Um, All right. Can an OCR PDF document be exported without having the Abbey Fine Reader add-on option? Exported. Um, I, I kind of need clarity there. Um, not sure exactly what they mean by exported. Is it uh, exporting to a different application or do you mean just email? What is there any over and above information that I could uh, receive there? What would be the scenario? Um, export to a to save to a PDF file. Okay, so you want to export the OCR document just to PDF without having the Abbey Fine Reader add-on. Sure. Absolutely, we. Um, as, as I did earlier, um, when you scan something in uh, um, that, that's positioned here, you can set your formatting to any one of these formats. So uh, this would be your default after you save the setting. So it could be JPEG, PNG, standard PDF. We use what's called PDF overlay for black and white scanning. The OCR, which is the Abbey Fine Reader, TIFF compress, group four, and multi-page. I did not show you multi-page because I ran out of time, but we can also do this. But if you want to scan in standard PDF, you can do so by just clicking this button. You have to accept your copyright. And there's the PDF. Now we can export that, we can export this as well to wherever you'd like, whether it be a network drive, uh, you can email it, you can you can do whatever you'd like at this point. And this is the one I just scanned, and it's in PDF format, .pdf. And there it is. Okay. Okay, two more questions um, before yes. we wrap this up here. When scanning with black and white, the images are not as clear as they are with grayscale. Is there any way to scan a page in black and white and use spot edit feature to make the images clearer? Yes. Um, well, clearer. I'm not, I'm not sure about clearer because I, my opinion, um, looking at this image, for instance, on the screen, it is extremely clear. I mean, again, it's, it's, this is high-resolution scanning. Um, I'd have to look at what you're scanning to uh, com, you know, completely answer this. But one of the, the things that I did not show, um, uh, we can increase our resolution of scanning. So if you have this scanner, the ScanPro 3000 set up at 300 dpi, you'll probably scan at roughly 250 dpi because we set the scanner, we, 
we drop down the scanner um, by about 50 dpi. So when you're scanning with the 3000, you should scan at a minimum of 600 dpi to get the best possible um, output and, and clarity. Um, so you, you need to look at what you're scanning at first and foremost. Secondly, we can actually combine grayscale and black and white overlay and the PDF overlay will look like this and this is an actual scan and I, I feel the clarity is very good but you also combine the grayscale with the black and white and this to me sort of looks like more of a newspaper article, if you will, or, or excuse me, page. I, I hope that answers your question. There's, there's some gray areas there that maybe offline I'd gladly address for you. All right. So last question, and I've had about, we have about four people on here um, that just are inquiring about price point um, of the unit. Sure. Pricing, um, it ranges. It all varies uh, based on your type of film uh, that you have on hand. Uh, some folks strictly use it for microfiche and aperture cards. So, the, you know, the range of uh, cost would be somewhere around eight, 9000 uh, If you get into the um, microfilm, uh, 16, 35 millimeter open reel, in addition to maybe... Uh, cartridge, 16 millimeter cartridge film, you could be in the ten, eleven, twelve thousand dollar range, depending on features and benefits and you know what uh, you incorporate uh, as uh, uh, what your needs are and, and what you have on hand uh, film wise. Uh, if uh, you would like to uh, set a free no obligation on-site demonstration of our ScanPro 3000, Wayne Haluska at IMR would gladly uh, accommodate your, uh, your needs and bring out a unit and, and check out your film through our uh, ScanPro 3000.